Hello, today we're going to show you how to do a foam replacement on a JL Audio subwoofer. This is the 12W7 model. Um, we also frequently see the 8W7, which uses this uh, surround here. We have a 10W7 as well. The 12W7, which is what we'll be using here today, we'll show you how that works. And then the big bad boy, which is the 13W7 uh, surround as well. So we have those available for all of them. The video will show the 12W7 being done from start to finish on the repair. All of the other models are identical, they're just different sizes. So we'll do the one video to show the W7 uh, for the JL um, foam edge replacement on this and uh, we'll get started on that when we come back and show you how to clean the cone and prep the frame and uh, get it done. Alright, so we'll start with our JL 12W7 uh, foam edge replacement. We just want to show you a little bit about the, the construction of the speaker on these. They're rather unique. Uh, you'll notice on the outside here there's a, a, a metal trim ring that holds the foam in place uh, around the outside of the frame. There's no gluing that happens here. The old foam as you can see is pretty much rotted. It's gone at this point. This is how the speaker arrived to us for repair. And You'll see the pieces that are left just kind of flaking off here. You'll also notice another unique feature on these is that right here where the cone edge meets or the surround uh, meets the cone, is that there's actually a sandwich cone here. We have two cones. We have, a, we have a, a bottom cone and then kind of a top cone assembly that fits above the foam. And because the foam has deteriorated, the outside edge of this upper cone lifts off very easily, as you can see as I spin the speaker around and kind of show you here. And that's due to the fact that the surround has deteriorated. Okay. The other issue we have here, uh, or the issue because of this, is that there's a glue point in the center. There's a, a, a secondary cone in the middle here that's, that's kind of part of the back assembly and that's what uh, there's an attachment point here that we have to kind of break free to get this top cone off so that we can clean this properly to install the new surround. It's actually sandwiched right in between these two parts. So what we want to do here on, the, on this is we'll kind of uh, come in here like this. We've shown you what this looks like here. Um, the best thing to do that we have found on these without taking the chance of damaging uh, this upper cone assembly here is, um, is, is to heat this a little bit. Uh, hair dryer works fine. Uh, just warm this polypropylene up a little bit. It'll soften the adhesive behind it. There's a little piece of uh, kind of a sticky tape almost and a little bit of adhesive there that attaches it right in the very center. There's no attachment point in the middle. This is just floating in here. Okay, the outside attachment point is already broken free for you because of the foam edge deterioration. And when we come back, I'll show you how we heat this up and remove this properly. Then we'll also work on the frame uh, connection point here for you uh, as well to show you how that's uh, done in an easy manner. All right. So the first thing we want to do here, um, we've shown you how the cap or the the top cone kind of lifts off there. You'll notice there's a logo right here, uh, the W7 logo, um, and there's a, there's a spot that that belongs for a reason that matches up with the terminal on the speaker here and the, and the nameplate on the speaker frame. So what I like to do is I like to just take a sharpie and come in here and just draw a line on the frame, kind of gives me a guide so that when we put the speaker back together after the repair we know exactly where to line that logo up with. So just a little Sharpie mark or something there is all you need for that. And then at this point, the, the best thing to do here, like I mentioned earlier, is we're going to heat this up with a hair dryer a little bit. Not too much, just to soften that adhesive, uh, just a moment or so. And then we'll show you how to kind of get in there with a, with a flat bladed screwdriver and kind of twist on that. And that'll break that free and then we can take this cap off and then do the cleaning of the cone edge like a traditional speaker would be done. And then of course we'll do the frame cleaning for you as well. So what we'll do is we'll just take a hair dryer, we'll set it on high uh, for high heat. Run that right along the middle there. Okay, and that'll get nice and warm for you there. You don't want to go too crazy with it. Uh, don't use a heat gun or anything like that. You'll melt the plastic. You just want to soften the glue there. You may need to come back and do it a couple of times. On the smaller speakers, the 8W7s and the 10W7s, a regular flat bladed screwdriver will work. On these big bad boys like this, on the 12.7 and the 13.7, we want to use a big one like this so we can get in there. The key is here is we want to get in here and just kind of turn this underneath the cone to kind of break the adhesive there and we'll show you how that works. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of pick any spot on the cone that you like, just carefully come in here like this, 
The cone is soft because of the heat from the from the hair dryer there applying that. You're not hurting anything here. You're just kind of prying this up just like this. And I'll try to keep my hand out of camera angle there to kind of show you how that works. It's a little bit tricky. Okay. And you'll hear the adhesive start to kind of let go there for you. And if you need to, you can come back in and give it a little bit more heat. with the hair dryer, but just really take your time here, be very careful. You're not going to hurt the cone as long as you're not prying too hard. Okay, and you'll see that it's starting to come up now. That's what we want. <clears throat> okay, just like this. Alright, I'll kind of spin it here. Hopefully the camera can kind of show you that angle there. Alright, and there we go. We got it. Okay, this is what it looks like. There's a little bit of adhesive pad back here, like this, okay? Inside the speaker, there's a little pad here as well. And you'll see where they just kind of apply the glue very liberally here, and that runs down on the inner cone. This is, when, this is what it looked like when they manufactured the speaker. This is right out of the factory here. So what we'll find here is that this little sticky piece can just kind of stay in place. There's a little spot on the back of the cone here that's the same way. We'll reattach that with adhesive when we're done. We're going to be cleaning this area of the back of the upper cone here, as well as the edge of the cone here and now at this point it's more like a traditional speaker that you may be used to so we'll do some cleaning on this we'll clean this area here and then we'll show you the frame and then we'll be ready for the installation of the new foam all right now we showed you the hard part which was removing the upper cone here you see we still have a lot of foam residue on the cone to work on here uh, any bits of foam and things that kind of fall into the cone we'll just let that happen shop back that out later. Uh, what we'll want to do next is we want to show you how to remove what's left of this foam residue on the outside. So here just take a, a, a standard size uh, flat bladed screwdriver. Just kind of get in there and turn that a couple of times. You'll notice that this ring just lifts right out of here like this. There's a lot of old foam residue on the ring here and that's what you're going to see. That's normal. We'll just kind of break that up, throw that on our scrap rag back here in the back kind of out of view and we'll take a little rubbing alcohol on a paper towel and rub this ring clean before we reinstall it. But the key is just get most of the old bits of foam off of the ring just like that. We'll set that off to the side for now. We'll show you here on the frame itself, you've got the glue here, or the, uh, the glue bond, or not the glue bond, but the, where the foam was attached because of the, the trim ring there. And you can either use a screwdriver here to kind of scrape this, Utility knife works well if you want to scrape it this way. What I like to use on them is I like to come in with just a, a wood chisel like this. Just kind of turn that like that. And just let the old pieces of foam fall right on your work surface there. It's pretty nasty stuff. Sticky. Makes a mess. Try to work somewhere where you can kind of not care too much about the, the area that you're dropping all this foam on because it does make a mess. All right. So you'll see what's happening here like this. Frame is clean. That's really all you need to do here. Um, you can also take a paper towel and do a little bit of extra cleanup here. I'll show you that just, just because we want to give you an example of what that looks like. Just take some rubbing alcohol. You can also use lacquer thinner. Paper towel folded over itself a few times. Come in here, kind of dampen that. See how that cleans that up real nice for you. It won't hurt the frame, it doesn't hurt the paint on the frame, it won't hurt the cone. Alright, so that's the key there. Just do that a few times around and you'll see what we're talking about there. Okay, so you'll work the frame all the way around just like this. We won't take up too much time on, on, on wasting time on the video to show you all of that, but the key is to have that all the way around the frame just like this when you're done. And that's pretty easy to do. Just take your time with it. And, uh, and that'll clean up nicely for you. Now we still have some residue obviously left on the cone here that we need to deal with on, on the bottom or the primary cone. So what we want to do here is we'll take our utility knife, we'll come in here like this, just kind of scrape along this and get that first top layer of old rotten foam off of the cone. Okay, hopefully the camera's kind of showing you what's going on there. You're not cutting the cone, you're just scraping the old foam away from the cone, just like this. Work around it one time here.
you'll notice you'll start to grab the, the kind of the rubberized glue that's also attached to the back of the cone. This is where it gets a little bit messy too. So you just want to kind of peel that. See how that comes off of there? Take your time with it. You won't hurt the cone. These are really bulletproof speakers as you know. If you purchase them new, you know what they cost. So in this case, there's, there's no worries about really damaging anything on the cone here. Peel these pieces off like this. You'll see it gets all over your fingers. It's really nasty, sticky stuff. That's all right. Got to get it off of there so that you can do a proper job of gluing the new part down. Now you see we still have a little bit of residue left on the cone here. Most of it's been removed. All this will shop back up here in a minute and we'll clean that up for you. <laughs> what I like to do here again is come in with the rubbing alcohol to the frame or to the edge of the cone, I'm sorry. And we'll come in and we'll just kind of dampen this up like this. There's one time around the cone already. That was pretty fast for you. We'll come in, do it again. Let it soak in. Again, you can use lacquer thinner if you have some around, just very lightly. But we like to just use the rubbing alcohol. It's a little easier to work with. It's not so strong. Okay. And let that soak in for just a moment or two. Just kind of set that old rag aside. It's just basically a paper towel. Throw that out. Have extras of those laying around ready to go. If you come in here again with your utility knife, you can see that you're getting just a little bit more residue up here as a function of the rubbing alcohol being dampened on the cone. So this is what we want to do. We're going to work this around several times. We're going to clean up the entire frame for you. We'll vacuum up our work area here. And then the last thing we'll show you before gluing the noose around is to clean the bottom of the upper cone, which is done pretty much the same way. So we'll show you that as a separate step. We'll clean this uh, all up for you. We'll come back and uh, we'll get that ready to go. All right, so we've taken the time now, uh, like we were showing you uh, earlier there, to finish cleaning the rest of the outer frame. We use our rubbing alcohol and uh, paper towel. You can use a rag, just kind of wipe this around. You see how clean that got, it's very nice. Everything's ready to go. Same thing on the cone. We used our rubbing alcohol treatment on this after we had scraped off the foam there. And uh, we shop vacuumed everything out, cleaned up our work surface area, and we're good to go on that. The speaker is pretty much ready. You can see uh, what it looks like on the inside there at this point. What we'll do now, um, I'll show you the trim ring as well. We cleaned off the trim ring. There's a lot of foam residue stuck on the trim ring. That's what you want there. And you can kind of see how the new foam surround sits right on top of there already. Just to give you kind of a visual, you lift the cone up with your fingers from behind and it meets that perfectly. And that's, that's what you're after there. So you want everything to be nice and clean for the gluing, which we'll get to here in just a little while. For now, we'll set the speaker kind of off to the side like this. All right, so we'll do the cleaning here. Uh, I've moved the speaker off to the side of the upper cone. You'll notice there's a, a foam residue on the back of this, the old rotten foam. Obviously, we need to remove that because that gets glued back down after we do the repair. So we'll take a rag, just kind of lay it out here like this. This is fine, something like that. You can use newspaper, old rag, whatever you have handy for that. Set this down in place like this where you have the foam residue here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna work the chisel along this edge. Use a flat bladed screwdriver or something. I find the chisel works nicely. And you'll see the foam coming right off here like this. Okay, a lot of this will come off just with, with rubbing your fingers over. But it gets a little sticky, so it's nice to have a tool to kind of help with that a little bit. And that's what you want to work on there, all the way around the back of the upper cone. And this applies to all the JL series speakers in the W series, W7s. Okay. So we'll do like this. And then what happens here is you're going to have a little bit of residue left over. We're going to take some rubbing alcohol. We'll fold a paper towel over a few times like this. We'll show you that, how to kind of clean that. Get that good and wet on the paper towel there. And I'll just show you the area that I've already done. Of course, you'll work around the entire cone. And this is what you want to do. You see the material coming off like this. You're not going to hurt the polypropylene in any way with the rubbing alcohol. It just helps to clean what's left of the old foam residue. Just kind of hold it with one hand on the back side and just work, work it like this. So you'll work all the way around, which we'll do uh, here for you, and then we'll come back and show you how to uh, glue the new parts in place on that, and then uh, we'll be ready to go. All right, so we've got everything uh, cleaned up here we showed you uh, earlier. We also took the time 
on the upper cone and cleaned all of the foam off of the bottom. We showed you with the scraping uh, with the wood chisel there uh, to uh, get all the old foam residue off. Then we took some rubbing alcohol and paper towel and just kind of clean that off. And that's what you want. You want everything nice and clean. No more glue residue or foam attached to this upper cone whatsoever. We'll set that off to the side because we're going to be using that, of course, later when we're done with the repair. Here's the new surround that goes on this. You'll see how it sets perfectly just right on the outside there. If we lift up the cone with our hands, you see it sits on there perfectly. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is applying a bead of adhesive right here along this entire outer edge of the cone. All right, then we'll smooth that out. We'll let that sit up for a moment or two. We'll apply the surround, lift the cone up to it, and then uh, we'll work that on there. That has, to, that has to dry for about an hour or two before we can uh, do the next step, which is going to be the gluing of the top cone back on the top of the surround once everything is done. And that's how these W7 woofers are construction, constructed with the dual cone. So we'll take our adhesive that comes in the kit, remove the cap off of it like this, We'll apply a bead of adhesive right here in this area, uh, and I'll show you how that's done. Usually just rest your hand right on the, on the frame, squeeze the adhesive, about an eighth of an inch bead right in the middle of the lip of the cone or the landing on the cone there is what you want. One time around, just like that. We'll cap the adhesive, set that off to the side, take your fingertip, Smooth that adhesive out into a nice uniform layer all the way around the cone edge, just like this. Fingertips work best for this. You don't need brushes or Q-tips or anything like that. They just tend to get in the way and slow things down. Just keep a rag handy to keep your finger clean, and that's what you want. Okay, just like that. All right. Now, we'll take the, the surround, just like this. Just set it in place right on top of the frame like this. Get behind the cone with your fingers and lift the cone up to meet the surround. You can see right in here what we're doing. Camera can get in there on that angle. That's exactly what you want right there. And there's not a lot of work that needs to be done here. You just need to kind of give it some pressure, finger pressure down to the cone while holding the cone up with one hand. So I have one hand behind the cone holding it up at all times. You can take a coffee stirrer if you like. And use the edge of a utility knife if you prefer to kind of press down on that uh, or just your fingertips is fine but the key is to keep the cone held up with one hand while you press down on the top of the surround with the other hand just like this and you can just kind of run it around several times like this this is going to take about an hour or so to dry and uh, once we come back we'll show you the final gluing of the top cone into place where we'd be applying adhesive right here to the center area of the inner cone and then a bead of adhesive to the top of the surround as well. This lays in here just like this. Okay, so we'll get that going for you once this dries and uh, we'll let this dry up and then come back and show you how that works. Alright, so we've let our surround dry thoroughly to the cone here, as we showed you in the steps earlier in the video. Uh, you want to let this sit an hour or two, maybe three hours. Uh, overnight, if you want to do it that way, is fine. But definitely, uh, you know, get, a, get some time on it because there's a lot of pressure uh, that builds up on these in, in the sub cabinets uh, for, for what these are. So, uh, once this is attached to the cone properly, as we showed you here, uh, we're good to go on this. You'll notice the outside kind of moves like this. Before you install the speaker into the cabinet, obviously you lift this up, the screws are underneath here. Um, the trim ring goes right back down on this just like before. You just kind of tuck that down like that. All the way around, just squeeze that around like this. Kind of turn it as I'm squeezing it down. And this is just for illustration purposes, just to kind of show you. Uh, what's going on here? Obviously, this gets done uh, after you mount it into the back into the enclosure. But this shows you how everything centers up perfectly for you as I'm moving the cone. Everything is centered exactly where it needs to be. Everything is re-stiffened up now, back to original spec with this original part. We have the upper cone or uh, upper skin, as, as JL calls it, which sits right on top here like this. Okay, and you get kind of a view of that there. If you recall earlier in the video, we showed you how to make a mark. Before you remove that upper cone, 
which is right here, lines up with the terminal nameplate on the speaker. There's the black mark there, and that's where we'll line up the logo. Okay. So what we want to do here is we're going to attach the upper skin in place. We'll take our adhesive, we'll apply a bead of glue right here on the upper lip of the foam that you've just installed to the cone. Okay, just a little bit like that right in there. Not too heavy, otherwise the adhesive will kind of press out and get on the surround and you'll have kind of a sloppy repair. So that's what you want it to look like right there, all the way around the cone. You don't need to smooth that out, just kind of let it set up for a few minutes and uh, let the air kind of get to that and start to activate that adhesive. Now right in here, if you recall, when we used the uh, hair dryer to kind of soften through the, uh, through the upper cone there and soften the glue bond here at the middle or the apex of the, of the lower cone or the W cone they call it, um, we're going to go ahead and apply a nice liberal bead or uh, basically just a, a ball of adhesive right here in this area is what we want to do. So we'll just run our glue like this nice and even all the way around there like that just like that you can see from when they built the speaker at the factory they were very liberal with their adhesive there it actually ran down on the apex of the cone there in the center of the lower cone so that's what you want is a nice thin uh, skin of adhesive there set that back up we'll cap our glue keep your hands clean when you're dealing with this part so that we don't get it, any adhesive or residue along the upper cone area here. Here's the contact point for the middle of the cone here. The outer contact point is all the way around the top edge of the inside lip of the foam where we applied the glue there. And we'll just find our mark right here, the black mark that we made with our, with our Sharpie here uh, at the beginning of the repair. And we'll line this up and set it in place. Just like this. A little pressure like that is what you want. We'll check our mark. We can actually spin it a little bit if we need to. See me kind of turning it there so that our logo lines up correctly with the black mark on the frame which corresponds to the data plate on the speaker frame lower here where the connection is as well. So I'm going to turn that so I can check it from my side. I'll probably get out a camera view here for a second for that. And that's exactly what you want. Now at this point, we want to let this set up for several hours. Probably best to let it sit overnight. Again, there's a lot of pressure on the assembly here once this is back in the cabinet. What I like to do is take a couple rolls of masking tape, duct tape, whatever you got laying around, set that in place like that. Something kind of nice and heavy. If you wanted to use you know, a couple of large nuts like that, you can do something like that as well. This works fine. Just a pound or two of weight there uh, is all you need. And we'll let that set up like that. We'll check this a couple of times here in the next few minutes just to make sure that everything is seated properly. And that is it. The W7 woofer repair is done. The same repair does apply to all the series, the 8, 10, 12, and 13. Once this dries uh, here for several hours or overnight, it's ready to reinstall back into the cabinet and you're good to go.